Therefore, it's time for members' statements. The member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today to highlight World MS Day. World MS Day is celebrated every year on the last Wednesday of May. During the month of May, the global MS community comes together to share stories, raise awareness, and campaign for everyone affected by MS. Canada has the highest rate of multiple sclerosis in the world. An estimated 100,000 Canadians live with the disease. In Ontario, more than 35,000 people are living with MS, and each day, three people are diagnosed with this terrible affliction. That number quickly increases when we consider the impact of MS on family caregivers, friends, and the community. The unpredictability and sometimes invisible nature of this disease creates a challenge for Canadians living with MS and their caregivers as it affects their employment and financial security. Ontarians with MS need our support to ensure those able to work remain employed and that adequate financial supports are in place to address their daily challenges. They also need access to quality, coordinated care, and it is our job to ensure they receive it. Today on World MS Day, I'm wearing a carnation to show my solidarity with the MS community in the fight against MS. Mr. Speaker, I urge each one of us to join this fight to end MS in our lifetime and affect positive changes in the lives of those impacted by this disease today. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further members' statements. The member from Kenora, Rainy River. Thank you, Speaker. Today I rise on the important issue of telecommunications infrastructure in northwestern Ontario. The sad reality is that much of my riding is still without cellular telephone coverage and decent internet service. This lack of service prohibits Northerners from competing in the global economy, where other areas of the province take for granted the ability to con conduct business online. In many areas of the Northwest, something as simple as maintaining an up-to-date company website, a necessity for doing business, is often a struggle. Couple this with the lack of cell service, and you can understand why tourists who are easy or sorry, I should say, eager for adventure in nature, uh, but who require the ability to check in with work and family are driven away, costing resort owners business. Traffic accidents or vehicle breakdowns are made that much worse by it happening along a desolate highway hundreds of kilometres from the next town, where there is no cell service to call for help. Speaker, this is unacceptable at a time when most of the world, regardless of how remote it is, um, in areas that are remote, have access to these basic services. Northerners are tired of having to make a business case to this government for what should be a matter of basic fairness. All of Ontario benefits from the natural resources of the Northwest. We should not have to generate these benefits at an unfair and dangerous disadvantage. Residents, business owners and travellers in northwestern Ontario want to know when they can expect these same basic infrastructure uh, and investments that is enjoyed by the rest of the province. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from uh, Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today is World Multiple Sclerosis Day. Multiple sclerosis, or MS, is an autoimmune disease of the central nervous system. This complex and chronic disease attacks the protective covering of the nerves, causing the inflammation. Most MS patients are diagnosed in the late teens. Canada has the highest rate of MS in the world. An estimated 100,000 Canadians live with the disease. In Ontario, more than 35,000 people are living with MS, and each day, Mr. Speaker, three people are nearly diagnosed. As a World MS Day, it gives us an opportunity to spotlight on this debilitating disease, but also highlight the initiatives the government is taking to support individuals with MS. Starting January 1, 2018, young people under the age 25 with MS will have their medication covered by the OHIP Plus Children and Youth Pharma Care Program. The province also recognized the importance of caregiver support for individuals living with MS. Besides the eight-week unpaid caregiver leave, the government plans to introduce legislation to expand emergency, a personal emergency leave. This is in addition to the new Ontario Caregiver Tax Credit. Many people living with MS live independent in our community with support. I would like to acknowledge TransCare, a recognized health agency in my riding of Scarborough Asian Court, for their quality of care supporting individuals living with MS in Scarborough. Speaker, I encourage all of us here in the chamber, around across the province, to recognize MS, but more importantly, to support them in their fight, in our fight against MS. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for the member from Nipissing. Thank you, Speaker. We have a great lifestyle in Northern Ontario. Patty and I enjoyed touring the riding this weekend, as we do every weekend when I get home. At breakfast on Saturday, a group of concerned citizens met with us at Echo's Restaurant in Powassan. Mm -hmm. Elle served us a beautiful breakfast, but the talk was quite serious. In fact, uh, 
None of them got a moose tag this year. And in the zone they live in, the tag allotment has been drastically reduced. Yep. It was 106 tags in 2013, six last year, down to one this year. This is their heritage. This is our heritage, and it's being lost. I promised these good people I would delve into this, and it didn't take long to realize what the issue was. On my drive from Echoes to Trout Creek, I actually came across a dead moose that was hit, struck on the highway and laying on the side of the road. I got out, photographed it, put that photograph up on Facebook asking about other such instances. And it was only minutes later that stories and photos flooded in. In fact, it was only a few kilometers from that first moose in the morning uh, that another moose was hit, maybe a half hour later, hit by a friend of mine in his week old Jeep. So, Speaker, what we're asking for is that if this government cares about people's safety and cares about northern heritage, they should allow the proper number of moose tags be issued. Thank you. Further member Stevens, the member from London West. Thank you, Speaker. Last month, on April 18th, I hosted a hydro town hall in my riding of London West. What I heard loud and clear was Londoners' strong opposition to this government's misguided sell-off of Hydro One. I want to thank Ange Thompson, who attended the town hall and provided me with hundreds of signed postcards addressed to Kathleen Wynne, which state, your government has no mandate to sell our public hydro system. Selling it off will mean even higher rates, making it, making it even tougher to keep businesses open. Please stop now. Hydro One is not for sale. Despite the fact that 80 per cent of Ontarians oppose the sell-off of Hydro One, this Liberal government is ploughing ahead with their privatization agenda. Since my Hydro Town Hall, the Liberals have done even more damage, putting more Hydro One shares on the market and approving a $45 billion borrowing scheme that will cause bills to soar even higher, a fact that was confirmed last week by the Financial Accountability Officer. Since the Liberals took office, Hydro rates have gone up a staggering 300 per cent. Under this Premier alone, rates have gone up 50 per cent. Kathleen Wynne simply doesn't get it. Ontario families are at a tipping point and can't take any more hikes to their hydro bills. Londoners have clearly told me they want to keep hydro in public hands, and they do not trust the Liberals to put the interests of the people of Ontario ahead of the Liberal Party when it comes to lowering hydro rates. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This year marks the 100th anniversary of the opening of the Kościuszko camp in Niagara on the Lake, where thousands of soldiers of Polish descent from both Canada and the U.S. trained for weeks prior to being shipped shipped off to Europe to take part in the World War I effort and to free Poland from 123 years of occupation. With the outbreak of World War I in 1914, the Polish community in Canada and the U.S. began to consider ways to help Poland gain independence through military means. And as soon as recruitment began, thousands and thousands of Polish-Canadian and Polish-American volunteers flocked to Niagara-on-the-Lake. The Niagara-on-the-Lake Training Centre was known in Polish as Camp Kościuszko, but to Canadians as simply the Polish Camp. These soldiers lived in the Niagara-on-the-Lake region for many weeks. Many were unable to speak English, and others were swept up with the influenza of 1918 and never left and were buried at a special cemetery at St. Vincent de Paul Church. But regaining and holding Poland's new independence after World War I was due to these soldiers, and many of whom were trained at Niagara on the lake in battles in 1918 and on the Western Front, and also in 1919-20 fighting the Polish-Bolshevik War. Today we thank those Polish soldiers from Camp Kościuszko and the community of Niagara on the Lake for uh, entertaining them and uh, housing them. And we remember those who selflessly laid down their lives for Canada and their homeland. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member from Dufferin Caledon. Thank you, Speaker. As the school year is coming to an end and many children are receiving their report cards, I thought that I would provide a report card on the Liberal government's legislative session. So let's review the government's track record on their assignments. Regarding the hydro crisis, a recently released Liberal cabinet document shows that the Liberals are playing a political game, not solving systemic problems with hydro rates. On the hydrophile, an F. 
On the management of the mental health crisis, the government has again failed Ontarians. We continue to hear about long wait lists and higher rates of hospitalization of our youth due to mental health. On the mental health file, an F. I was hoping that the government would come to a decision on the GTA West Corridor. It's been over a year since the advisory panel was established, and Ontarians wait for a decision. Again, on the GTA West Corridor file, an F. Another outstanding assignment includes restoring Auditor General oversight on government advertising, addressing the government's growing debt, taking real action to address the lack of supply of housing in the Greater Toronto Area. Overall, this legislative se session has been a disappointment for yeah. families looking to address real issues that matter to Ontario families. All in all, incomplete. Thank you. Two further member statements. The member from Nickelbelt. Thank you, Speaker. I'm really pleased to rise today to talk about World MS Day, World Multiple Sclerosis Day. Multiple sclerosis is a chronic, progressive neurological disease involving damage to the shield of the nerve cell in the brain and in the spinal cord. Uh, the symptoms vary, but they may include numbness or loss of proprioception, impairment of speech, impairment of muscul uh, muscular coordination, blurred vision, and most of the time, severe fatigue. The symptoms come, then they go away, then they come back, sometimes more severe. People living with multiple sclerosis need access to diagnostic and treatment. Unfortunately, access is not equitable throughout the province. Uh, it is severely lacking in northeastern Ontario, the people that I represent. But we do have the Rona Ramsey MS Centres of Hope. Uh, it is, uh, Rona Ramsey is an amazing woman from my writing. She lives in Naughton, uh, and the Rona Ramsey MS Centre of Hope is in Coniston, also in my writing. Uh, it is a place where people can gather, they can socialize, and uh, they can use a gym as well as a fitness instructor to try to keep them as fit as possible. I will urge everyone uh, to join this campaign to end multiple sclerosis in this lifetime. I think we can do this, Speaker, and for everybody living with MS, uh, happy Multiple Sclerosis Day. Thank you for coming to Queen's Park. Thanks for the nice flowers. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Ottawa, Van Mr. Speaker, I would like to share an initiative that exists in the riding of Ottawa Vanier that I represent. It is about a community riding competition that's entitled Tell Us About Vanier. It's for the francophone popul population of the riding, and we want to produce a book that will tell the story of Vanier uh, through uh, anecdotes, uh, through witnesses, uh, through people who have already lived or are still living in Vanier. David, David, a French publishing house that is located in Ottawa that leads different projects that are aimed at getting the community to read and write. Racontez-nous Vanier is a continuation of. Racontez-nous Vanier is a project that permitted the publishing of four collections of short stories about the reality and the diversity of the French population of Ontario. For this project, the David Editions looked for the support from different community centres, of which, including the Vanier Centre, they, they offered writing workshops to allow everybody to write benefits from the support of the Ontario Trillium Foundation, and it's a good example of the positive influence that certain artistic organizations like Les Editions David can have on the quality of our cultural and our community life. Con congratulations to all who will participate. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Thank all members for their comments and statements. It is now time, therefore.